Hello everybody, AJ Ryzik here, and for today's review we're taking a look at Manjaro GNOME 15.12. Now, I have reviewed Manjaro GNOME a few times in the past, and to be perfectly honest, I really didn't have an, any intention to review it again, at least not at this point. Um, but kind of circumstances kind of led me to doing this review. Long story short, since I have done the new computer build, been running uh, Zubuntu 15.10 and been perfectly happy with it, but you know, I am one that likes to distro hop and I was in the mood to run uh, run GNOME again. So uh, at first I was going to do a regular, a full Arch installation and uh, and run the GNOME desktop there and I really didn't want to take the time to do that though so I decided well let's let's grab uh, Manjaro GNOME we'll install that I have not run uh, Manjaro since I did the new computer build so I wanted to see how it how well it played with the new hardware because to be perfectly honest in in the past when I have run Manjaro I've kind of found that it tends to be a little picky about what hardware uh, you install it on. I I've installed it for friends and that on on their laptops, on their computers, and everything works perfectly right out of the box. I've also run into situations where uh, it it was so much of a frustration. I you know I uninstalled it and, and went with something else. It just did not play nice with the hardware. Um, so it's it's always been uh, sort of a mixed bag to me. Um, unfortunately, with my current hardware setup, I found that um, at least with the GNOME desktop, Manjaro does not run great. It runs, but it uh, there there's quite a few glitches and problems enough so that I really don't want to use this as my main desktop. And as I go through the through the review, I'll kind of you know show you some of the stuff the issues that I ran to and that sort of thing but anyway let me go and grab here is the Manjaro uh, release news release about Manjaro GNOME 15.12 <clears throat> and just to kind of sum it up it is a very vanilla GNOME release and uh, you know it talks a little bit about what we've got here we've got GNOME 3.18.2 uh, the Linux kernel is 4.115, systemd228, uh, and so on and so forth. And I'll leave a link for this page down in the video description so you can take a look at it if you would like to. But like I said, it was a very vanilla GNOME, and since I was going to use this as my main desktop, you know, I grabbed some wallpapers from online and started adding some some extensions. Uh, you know to set it up the way that I wanted to um, by default it has a few few uh, extensions installed by default but not too many and your options as far as wallpaper just the default gnome wallpaper so like I said start downloading some stuff and, and whatnot now there's a lot of things that I really like about Manjaro first thing is the package manager one uh, you know right up here at the at the top of the screen got this little asterisk right click it and you can pick the update manager and boom you know I, I updated it earlier today so you know there's nothing to update but you can run it as an as an update um, or come back up here and go to the actual package manager it's got a real nice search function you can search you know just everything you can kind of browse through the groups or status repositories all that so let's uh, you know, let's let's find something to, I don't know. We'll search for zero AD. Boom, pulls it right up. If you want to go and install it, just right click, click install, and then after you selected something, click the little check mark up here, and do the installation. So all that is great. The search functions are great. One issue that I've run into was if you come to preferences and you need to put in your password for that okay got some general preferences here um, about setting up mirrors that sort of thing go to the AUR and the AUR support 
Okay, you can you can enable or disable AUR support, check for updates from the AUR, all that kind of stuff. What I found is that if you enable AUR support and you click on the search in AUR, the entire package manager freezes up and you know it locks everything up and eventually it just crashes and so I don't know if if this is just an issue with with GNOME or it's it's with uh, you know other desktop environments, um, but it is you know it's really frustrating to have you know you have the option to search the AUR and but then when you try to use it everything freezes up and and eventually crashes on you. Um, other than that aspect, the package manager is really awesome. Luckily, even without the package manager, you can still pull down packages from the AUR. And for those of you that are not familiar with the AUR, it stands for Arch User Repositories. Think of it as a giant community repository. Somebody can set up packages and whatnot so that you can use software that is not in the regular Arch repository. So let me just... Uh, and for those of you that have been using Manjaro in the past, you probably know how to do this on your own. But but let's uh, I'll do a little quick demo on on what you can do uh, via the command line uh, so that you can grab packages from the AOR. So let's go to the AUR. And once on the AUR page, you can do a search. So let's uh, I don't know what to look for. Uh, anything gnome let's just do a, a, a gnome search okay so they got there's all kinds of uh, you know themes and whatnot for gnome uh, so like right here there's this aurora themes let's say I wanted to pull that down from the AUR so let's open up the terminal so you use the command yaur and then whatever package you're looking for. So like I want to, let's say I want to get this, uh, uh, the, I don't know, the Aurora themes. Hit enter. And if there are several packages that match that description you just put in, it'll list them all here. And, and then you just enter in the the number of the package that you want to use uh, in this case there was only one because I did you know I already went to the AUR I knew the exact name of the package that I wanted uh, so I would just put in one here and it'll start downloading do I want to edit the package build no continue building yes let it do its thing Okay, and it, sometimes you will run into errors. So, but assuming that it hadn't run into errors, you know, at this point, it would ask you, uh, you know, do you want to continue building? Should we install it? It'll ask you for your password. Boom, and that's how it gets the installation done. The Manjaro Settings Manager is another high point. Let me drag that over here so we can take a look at it. So, and one of the big things here is kernel support. So you can see looking at this right here, I am running 4.117-1 kernel. Uh, that's the LTS kernel. It tells you what's running. Uh, it's the one that they recommend. But you've got, look at all these kernels that you have available. Not only newer kernels, but if you back up, you know, uh, some of these older kernels. So maybe for some reason uh, you got a piece of software that it really needs kernel 314 or 312 or 310 any of those you know boom you can go and run those and installing and using the kernels is so easy I mean you just go and pick you know like say this 4.4 click the install boom it's done you're going to need to reboot to use that new kernel um, but that's it uh, you know as opposed to so many other distributions where if you want to go and switch out to a different kernel it is all command line and you really really got to pay attention to detail so you don't screw up your system so very very much like that also if you come down here to hardware detection 
you know, right here it shows you, you know, the various open source and proprietary drivers that I have installed. And you can easily from here uh, go to all proprietary, all open source, switch back and forth, all that kind of stuff. So um, now other distributions have, you know, something similar. Um, but, you know, like I said, it is one of the features that I really like in Manjaro. So let me hit on the other two big issues that I have had with this distribution. The first one has been installation. Um, you know, I burned it to a burned the ISO to a USB, no problem. Uh, that that all went fine. Um, however, when it actually came down to installing on my computer, uh, the the installer which I was using their newer Calamari's installer. It crashed five different times on me so it wasn't until the sixth try at installation that everything finally worked and you know it wasn't a situation where I could say okay you know calamari's always crashes or freezes or locks up at such and such state no it was a different problem every time so you know I was essentially at the point where on that last try I was like look if this doesn't work uh, we're going to do the command line installer and, and install from the terminal. Fine, it, you know, at that point we finally did get the installation done, but like I said, it, it, it ended up being a major ordeal. And what the issue was, like I said, I really, really don't know because it, it crashed at a different point every time. So I had that. The other issue I've got is boot times. Uh, and, after getting to the splash screen it takes so long to actually get to my uh, my desktop environment at first I thought that everything didn't install correctly um, because uh, my and I, I've I've rebooted several times and kind of timed how long it's taking for for boots my boot times once I get past grub and get to the splash screen it takes me anywhere between two and two and a half minutes to uh, get to my desktop environment now that's kind of comparing to just regular old Ubuntu which on this same uh, on the same computer has a boot time of roughly four to five seconds so you know like I said that's why I was thinking wow maybe something's wrong with my installation um, I've I've never had a, a system that takes so long to boot up on me so I don't want to be a real big downer on the distribution because really you know once once uh, this distribution was installed ignoring the slow boot up and the little AUR glitch in the package manager everything has worked great you know every piece of software has has run fine no no glitches and crashes or anything like that everything's been stable it's worked great so you know I can't really be down on the on the distro for that um, you know you got when you combine both the the regular arch repositories and the AUR you got access to tons and tons of software so so that's really nice as well um, uh, as far as it being plain vanilla gnome uh, it's got its good and bad points you know if you wanted something that's already pre-customized for you eh, you're not going to get it however you know I'm the kind of person that even if I grab a distribution that has been customized I'm going to want to go and do it myself so for me plain vanilla whether we're talking GNOME uh, KDE uh, XFCE whatever plain vanilla is what I want because I'm going to go and customize it myself anyway well, I think that just about finishes up this review. Hopefully you enjoyed it. As always, leave comments, questions, all that kind of stuff down below. I will try to get to it as soon as possible. Give us a big old thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. And as always, I hope to see you all on the next video. Thanks a lot.